Welcome to Cat and Raven Designs. I'm Cat and I'm Raven. We are starting our whole brand new collection for March today. We are unveiling our new theme, which does not have a name yet, but it is Victorian inspired and steampunk. Yeah, and steampunk, which really steampunk falls under Victorian expired because you really don't have steampunk that isn't set in Victorian times. I'm sure you can find some somewhere. Someone was like, I want steampunk, but not Victorian. Yeah, that's how you get cyberpunk. They could have just gone to Edwardian instead of Victorian. Anyway, so it is inspired by all things Victorian. And this being our first one is steampunk inspired. So we're going to be doing this in layers. And I am very excited for this entire collection. Oh, I should probably talk about it real quick first before we talk about this soap. So this one's steampunk inspired. We do also have two other soaps that are joining up in the collection on top of the main four, I think we have. Three or four? Is it five? Four. four or five main? We're going to film four. We have three others that we didn't film. Well, partially. So we're bringing back Shields Green. Yes. We are also bringing you uh, Raven's <laughs> Bloody Rage Soap, <laughs> which uh, is a blood orange scented soap. There's a whole story with that. And then we also have the viewer selected and designed soap, which is as of this exact moment unnamed, but I'll put a picture of it here now. Uh, we did a live stream where everybody who was there at the live stream got to pick out the colors, the fragrance, how we were gonna do it, the whole shebang. And it looks like a peacock, so it's definitely going in this collection. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Our steampunk design on this one, it's going to be in four layers. So I'm going to go through each layer as we go, and I'm not going to talk about the whole thing at the beginning here. So this entire thing is going to be scented in citrus agave from our Fragrance Bay Candle Science. It smells really pretty. Like, it's that nice citrusy without being, like, wham bam punch in the face citrus. It's really good. So our first layer is gonna be brown oxide pigment with just a touch of red vibrance from Nurture Soap. Raven's new favorite thing is master batching. Everything. Everything. Master batch all the things. I have already told Raven that uh, master batching is fine unless I am the one making the soap because then I will get real boring real fast trying to- Hey, hey, <laughs> blended yet. Yeah, but you've also explained a whole bunch of other sh** Watch your and mouth. it's been more than 30 seconds. Watch your mouth. The blend rule was to make sure I wasn't swearing within the first 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Problem child. <laughs> it's got our blend of oils down here and then our light water solution, which both are master batch now because I like doing things once and not like six times. Screw that. I don't want to do that. Anyway, let's blend. I really like steampunk. Me too. I do wish there was more, and I'll, I'll pull up some pictures of steampunk. I'm, I want to make sure that I'm pulling up pictures that aren't. This is a reminder to editing Raven. Make sure that you're not just going with generic white people doing steampunk. There's a lot of really cool, awesome costume people that do steampunk that aren't just white people. It certainly aren't just wayfish white people. We need more variety in costuming. More diversity, it's important. Also, it looks really cool. See, my favorite steampunk costumes and whatnot are actually the people that are thicker doing it. It's like, grimy. thick with three C's. <laughs> I think then, I, I think those are like, those are the ones where I'm just like, Mwah, chef's kiss. I might also have a type two, so there's that. Yeah. Ooh, look at that color. Ooh. Oh, yes, please. So I wanted to go with a solid steampunk color palette without just being a bunch of brown. <laughs> There's a lot of um, steampunk stuff where it's just like basically sepia tone on everything with like touches of gold. And I, I like more vibrant colors. I mean, if we're going to talk about the Victorians, they were all about color. All so about So much it. color. So like, why not have some really vivid colors in your steampunk outfits? It's so cool. All right, I think that is hand mixed enough that now we can blend. Oh my God, is that not an amazing rusty red? It's so good. All right, let's get to pouring. Here we 
realize this is going to end up looking like a steampunk version of uh, Gold Digger. <laughs> <laughs> now that that is in, I'm going to do a quick mica line with some black onyx, I think. Mm hmm. And viral glitter. Yeah, I think that's going to do what I need it to do. Which I believe that's one of the colors I used for the embeds for this one. And that is our layer number one. So we're going to let that set up for just a second and we'll move on to the next layer. So our next color here is going to be Poppycock from Mad Micas. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> All right, time for our next layer. Like a line. Michael. All right, now another minute. This last round of colors is Honey Blush and Sahara Gold. It's mostly Honey Blush with just a touch of the Sahara. I get that really light, golden, leathery, tan color. Ooh, that's pretty. That Sahara is really potent though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm okay with that though. This is like exactly the color I wanted. Yeah. It's sort of like camel leather color. Blendy time. funny every time you um between each layer it looks like that's gotten darker and darker even though you're using <laughs> the same color trick of the eye yeah Whew. all right well that means i can actually put the michael line away all right so our last one is going to be green which is rainforest mica from nurture soap to get that sort of oxidized copper color i haven't used rainforest much no, it was one of those that we got and we had like all these plans for it and then like we started having to be more organized and like more thematic and have like more cohesion <laughs> instead of just willy nilly, let's do whatever the f we feel like. Where we bought supplies and then came up with designs based on that. Yeah. And not where we came up with designs and bought supplies. Yeah. Yeah. We're a lot better about that now. I need to blend this one quite as much because I don't need to worry about it setting up quickly. And I want a really flat, pristine, precise top on this for the embeds. Off we go for our final pour. This is like that sensual slutty pour porn right here. <laughs> Where the pour is just crawling up on you like on its hands and knees. Oh my god. <laughs> Giving you that, like, oh my god, what <laughs> <laughs> fake innocent look? Like, oh my god, you know me, daddy? Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> demisexual panic. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why I personified our poor into a dirty little slut? Yeah, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> The crap! <laughs> so we need to let this set up just a little bit before we do the embeds. It looks like it needs to be tapped a few more times. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. All right, so we're gonna let that set up for just a minute and then we will come back and do the embeds. So we're starting off our embeds with some melt and pour cogs. Very cool. You may recognize this mold from <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist design, but now we're going full steampunk. So if you commented on that video that you wanted to see steampunk with these, here you go. <laughs> we had already planned doing this one too. Yep. I know I've been watching a lot of, uh, I guess, CosTube, I think is what it's called. It's all the, the makers and cool people that like to do costuming. And it's things like Bernadette Banner and Rachel Maxey and Kathy Hay. And so there's also So Stein and Morgan Donner, folks that do a lot of historical inspired or historical recreations. I think that kind of stuff is so cool. And I know that steampunk is not. <laughs> <laughs> historical recreation, sort of like historical fan art. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
It's like your own personal historical OC. So if you're looking for some longer format videos with a lot of learning and just interesting stuff, those are all really great channels to check out. <laughs> if I were, if you were a vegetable, you'd be a cute cumber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that started off really organized and sort of didn't end that way. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, don't, I can't really fit anything in there. They're too big. <laughs> I don't know, should we do glitter on this? I feel like if I did any glitter, it'd be like maybe browns and blacks and that's about it. Cause we have like the, the smaller and the bigger on the brown and the orange. So like you can pick one color and do like a smaller on one color and bigger on the other. I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like the orange? Mm, it's just, I'm not feeling it. Okay. Is it black? Yeah, we got black. So this is just a little bit of black jojoba beads. All right, let's get this a spray. And we're done. Voila! And with that, we have our finished steampunk inspired loaf. We're gonna go ahead and let this sit for about eh, 18, 24 hours. We'll see how it behaves with that fragrance oil. And then we will come back and split these into loaves and then cut them down into bars and we'll see how we did with those layers. So if there is a YouTube ad available, we'll go ahead and let that run and we will be back in just a moment. See you in a sec. All right, welcome back. The slab is ready to go and look at those sides. Look at those colors. Ah. Let's get this cut down into loaves. <laughs> Dwayne! <laughs> Why are they always doing this now? Probably it's <laughs> colder weather. I don't <sighs> know. Why well, you gotta pick difficult fragrances, Ray then? Hey, hey, hey. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Those layers though. I know, how perfect are they? I mean, not to toot my own horn, but like, I did a good job. <laughs> yes, yes you did. I know, shocker. The thing that requires being precise and Raven was good at it. Anal retentive. Hey, hey, I'm good at precise too. I just don't always act like it. I know. Gosh, I love when I don't have to worry about lining up any embeds. <laughs> I can just <laughs> go for it. Right? <laughs> and, you know, I was having to think about something earlier. I was like, what got me into steampunk? Cause I really like steampunk. I think it's awesome. Like I'm already into Victorian stuff if that weren't apparent from a lot of our branding, but like what got me into steampunk? And I realized what it is. Allow me to set the scene for you. The year is 2001. It is prior to September. <laughs> so I am 13 and I will be turning 14 in less than four months. It is June. I am at the theater. What movie am I watching? I don't know. Atlantis, The Lost Empire. Possibly my favorite Disney movie ever. <laughs> I didn't get to see that one in theaters. If that, if that gives you an idea <clears throat> of like the age range that Kat and I are. <laughs> I saw Atlantis, The Lost Empire in theaters. That movie is turning 20 this year. <laughs> I was too poor to see it in theaters. That movie is almost old enough to drink. <laughs> right? It's an amazing movie though. It's really good. Now, 2001, I was 12. Oh, you were baby. All right. Well, I think it's going to be pretty obvious what this is going to look like. It's uh, not often we do a soap that it's pretty straightforward from the side what the inside's going to look like. But let's go ahead and pop a couple out of the middle here. There we go. Ooh. It very much looks like a steampunk version of Gold Digger. Yes, yes it does. Gold Digger is cosplaying in steampunk. <laughs> but you know what? It looks really cool. I'm super happy with it. I don't know how worth it it is to really show individual bars because they're all gonna look exactly the same, but that mica line, perfection. These layers, perfect. Yes. Very excited. And the gears look really cool on top too. They even look like kind of dirty and grungy. Yeah, exactly. Like they look like they got dirt on them. Yeah. If you, if you could pick like an aesthetic, so like steampunk's an aesthetic, right? It's like a thing. Mm-hmm. What, what's your favorite, do you think? 
Is like gothic steampunk an option? I'm sure. I mean, it's just steampunk, but with more black instead of brown. <laughs> that. <laughs> that aesthetic right there. Because I love the corsets and the skirts and the black and the you know, quality corsets. We've been watching too much uh, yeah. cause tube. <laughs> yeah, I need quality corsets. I bet my mom's going to like this one. My mom really likes the look of Gold Digger. <laughs> I think she'll like this one too. <clears throat> Hi, mom. My mom watches our videos. Like, I think we've talked about this before, but I didn't know initially that she watched our YouTube channel. And then during Thanksgiving dinner, and this is obviously a couple years ago, because, you know, pandemic. She's like, oh yeah, I watched your YouTube channel. And be without even thinking about it, like the first thing that popped in my head was, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that you watch our YouTube channel, Mom. Please, don't judge me. I don't know, it's one of those things where like, my mom is really supportive. My, my family has been very supportive of what we do. And they're awesome. But like, there's a certain amount of me that's like, there's internet me, and then there is real life me. And I generally keep those things at least mildly separate because you, you need to do that for your own sanity. <laughs> and to have that crossover is occasionally a strange experience. Like, we're not at the point that people recognize us or anything like that when we're walking around. So we retain a certain amount of anonymity <laughs> in our personal lives. And there's nothing wrong with my family watching the YouTube channel. I, I don't care. That's fine. It was just sort of a, oh... Oh, hi. Okay. I guess I just didn't expect our first, like, fan <laughs> experience in the wild to be a surprise. My mom. You know? <laughs> like, hi, mom. Do you like Atlantis? I love that movie. It's a great movie. It's one of my favorites. It's, like, top, top five. Please advise me how many young, young people. Atlantis, Treasure Planet. Treasure Planet's pretty amazing too. That's also one of my favorite movies. Really love that movie. That Road movie's to El Dorado. so. That's not Disney, but also love that movie. Show me. <laughs> Raise your hands in the comments. How many people saw Atlantis: The Lost Empire for the first time, and Olga came on screen, and you panicked? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you didn't panic. <laughs> The second that one was on screen. And you had to check and be like, this is a Disney movie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, you know by killing dozens of people in the first few seconds. Yeah, there was a lot of death in that movie, though. You're right, David. <laughs> Just right out the game. Just so much death. I mean, I don't feel like I'm giving away any spoilers. Like I said, the movie is two decades old. They have go through this whole montage of assembling this giant team and like 90% of the team gets killed in the first like 20 minutes. Ooh, it's bad. I don't know. I just, I remember, I wanted to be an animator as a kid. Um, I've always been really into art. And I know some of you know that I, I'm getting back into art because art became this sort of emotional trouble spot for me for the last, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. I'm getting back into it, but I used to be completely in love with art and animation and I wanted to be an animator and I wanted to be an illustrator and I wanted to do all that. And I remember being in the theaters watching the scene where Kida and the, the like power force come together and those huge rocks fall down into the water in the cavern and like the splash of the water over this force field bubble over her. And I was just like, oh, oh my God, this is so well animated. And I'm like geeking out about it in the movie theater. And I'm like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Oh my God. And my poor parents, I think it was my mom that was with me, must have been like, oh my God, this nerd child. <laughs> What is she doing? <laughs> all right. So with that, our steampunk inspired design is all done. Oh, I'm still just so in love with the look of these lines and the colors and the cogs. So cool. Oh, okay. So these are going to be available at the end of March on our website, which is linked down in the description box. 
We do keep a variety of designs on hand at all times, and then this will be part of our monthly collection. So if you need soap now, there are definitely some cool options in the shop. And per our usual, it is your hydration reminder from Soap Mom. I'd also like to remind you, if you haven't eaten yet today, this is your fuel reminder. Make sure that you are also fueling your body. You got things to do. Yeah, awesome. So with that, we will catch you for the next video. Hope you have a good rest of your day. We'll see you later. Bye.